the Made For This podcast and YouTube series. I'm so excited to talk about today's topic, which is all about worth. Now, the number one reason that I hear most women don't get into ministry is because they feel like they're not worthy of serving God because of what you've done or maybe currently what you're doing. Have you ever experienced that feeling or that voice that tells you that you're not enough? That small voice that sneaks up on you and you know that feeling that I'm talking about, right? It's that feeling that when God calls you, you don't measure up. That moment where you think, how can I work in God's kingdom the way that I am? As a woman in particular, we struggle with our worth. We struggle to see how we can have a place within the kingdom because we struggle to see what God sees in us. And we struggle to see and believe that our past has somehow in some way has disqualified us. Now, trust me, you're not, you're not alone at all. If we look to the scriptures and we look to Esther, right? Esther struggled with um, being able to see her purpose and her worth. And it wasn't until her uncle reminded her that she was created for such a time as this, that she was created for uh, for her people to be able to liberate her people. And she doubted this for just a moment. Just how that one little sneaky thought comes in and says, you're not worth it. But I came here, not to be your uncle, but to be a, to be a voice to remind you that you are worthy of God's love and of his ministry and your place in the kingdom. Now, how, um, how can we understand our worthiness of Jesus and our calling in view of our sinfulness? Now, first, in order to kind of understand a little bit more, we have to dip into some definitions. Now, the definition um, of worth is having value of something measured by its qualities or by esteem in which it's held. Now, the word worthy means having worth or value. Now, when we look at this worth, uh, I mean, this word in light of our sinfulness, I think we can all think about John the Baptist in John 1 27 where he says who comes after me the strap of his stand sandal I am not worthy to unite John the Baptist himself said I'm not even worthy to tie Jesus's sandals and so when we come to think about Christianity and we come to think about our worth I think that this is one of the verses that we go back to because we think Oh, if John the Baptist said he wasn't worthy of um, strapping his sandals or tying Jesus' sandals, then how are we worthy of Jesus? Now, the first thing that you have to understand is that um, the first thing that you have to understand is that you have value, not you are worthy, and you have value not because of you, but because of what Jesus did. And Jesus's sacrifice okay you are worthy because you don't have to earn this you don't have to like uh, deserve this it's simply by accepting Jesus's sacrifice that makes you worthy of Jesus and his calling okay you are worthy and you have value because one you were created by God. The Bible says that he knit you in his womb, that you were created. God had you in mind from the beginning of creation. And you have value because you were created in God's image. You are you have value because everything that God created is good. 
And second, you have value because of what Jesus did on the cross. You have worth because of what Jesus did on the cross. If we look back to the definition of worthy, it's the value of something measured by its qualities or schemes in which it's held. Or having worth or having um, value. If we had no worth and we had no value, then why would Jesus die for us? If there was nothing to hold in esteem, if there was nothing that Jesus saw or God saw in us, then why would he come off his throne and come to this earth to bear our sins so that he can have a better relationship with us? So God obviously values us. God obviously um, sees worth in us enough to die for our sins. Okay, Paul said in Acts 26, 20, he said, repent, turn to God, performing deeds worthy of repentance. Okay, now we are not worthy because of what we do. We are only worthy because of Jesus' sacrifice. Okay, now Paul tells us, that there is two parts to being worthy. And the first part is, the key is repentance. Repentance is acknowledging your mistakes, turning to God for help, and valuing God above all things. The first thing is recognizing that we make mistakes, recognizing that we are not perfect, and nothing that we can do there's nothing that we can do that will make us more valuable in God's eyes, okay? Now, it's understanding that we can't, our sins will not be forgiven based off of the good things that we do, if not turning to God and telling God, please forgive me for the mistakes and the sins that I have created. And... When you turn to God humbly and honestly, God is quick to forgive you. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Repentance, just, it doesn't stop at you just acknowledging your mistakes and turning to God for help. It's also valuing God above all things. Valuing what God values, right? Valuing what God values. And how do we know what God values is looking in his word. The Bible says that the word is a lamp unto our feet. It's what guides us. It's what draws us nearer to God. It's what helps purify us and lets us know how we can mature in our walk in Christ. Okay? So it's valuing what God values, valuing God. It's not only recognizing our mistakes, it's turning away from our mistakes and starting to act in a way that shows that we have value towards God, that we value God's standards, that we God, we value God's word. Now, the second part of this is performance, right? The definition of performance is to adhere to the terms of the fulfillment of a claim, promise or request, the execution of an action, to now act according to God's standards. So first, the, the scripture says, repent and turn to God, performing deeds worthy of repentance. Okay, so the problem that I see with most people is that most people are willing to admit their mistakes. Most people are willing to admit their sins. But for some reason that I can't really understand and maybe each individual person understands, I don't understand how you can see your mistakes, know that God is there to be able to help you and guide you to live a more abundant and joyful life. Yes, problems will still be there, but you will have God on your side. And I can't really understand why we can see our mistakes, but we don't want to turn from them and live according to God's standards. Because we think that it deprives us from something when in reality it frees us, 
right? We think that living according to the Bible is living under a bunch of rules, which there are a lot, you know, there are a lot of uh, rules within the Bible. But the more you follow God's standards, the more you look to seek and please God, in reality, all of this is incredibly freeing. It's incredibly freeing to be able to uh, know that your sins are forgiven and that anything that you do, you can come to God and come honestly like you would come to a friend and be able to say to God, you know, forgive me for, for my sins and forgive me for my mistakes. And God is just so quick to be there and help you and guide you. We just have to be willing to sit and listen. So we can have a joyful life. We can have a life full of joy. But first, there are two things that we need to do in order to know our worth. And the first thing is to decide. Decide that you are worthy. Not because of you, but because of Jesus' sacrifice. We have to decide, you know what? I have, maybe I've made mistakes. Maybe you feel like Moses, or maybe you feel like Gideon, or maybe you feel like many of the people that have been called into ministry. And into a relationship with God. And you just think to yourself and you make a long list of all the things that you aren't, right? Trust me, I've, I'm i not here to say that I'm a saint and that I've done everything perfectly. I have fallen into this trap of feeling unworthy, feeling like I don't have the qualities, I don't have the capabilities, I don't have the knowledge, but yet God still calls me and God still says that I am worthy. But first, you have to decide that you are worthy. You have to just be okay with the fact that God loves us so much. And that God sees so much value in us that he died. And not only did he die, he resurrected. And now he lives within us. And not only does he live within us, but he calls us to... Uh, he calls us to work within the kingdom of God. He sees so much value in our life that not only did he die for us, he sees that he can use everything that is within us, all the good and all the bad, to still work within his kingdom. You just have to decide that you are worthy. Not because of you, but because of Jesus. And that decision will give you the confidence that will will lead you into developing like that decision to see, just say you know what i am worthy maybe not by my merits not maybe by what i do but i am worthy because jesus said that i am worthy i am worthy because god said that i am worthy and because god says that i am worthy that gives you the confidence to be able to work within the kingdom maybe not at first Maybe you're going to feel awkward. Maybe you're going to feel like you, should be, you shouldn't be there. Maybe you feel like you're out of place. But let me tell you, the more you walk and the more you walk in your purpose, the more you walk into what God has called you to, the more you work in God's house, the more confidence you're going to feel. Because it doesn't, the confidence doesn't come from what you do, but it comes from who you serve. Remember, you're not going to be perfect. Well, let me just tell you straight up that you're going to be far from perfect. But God's grace allows you to be in the position that you are. God's grace allows you to work within the kingdom of God. Now, we have to beware because we can't let that confidence grow into being conceited or letting it get to your head because the problem that I that I see is that we forget why we serve and sometimes we over uh, think of our worth we start to grow into conceitedness and not 
and we leave confidence to the side. You know, I've seen it where you start off humble. You start off where you don't feel worthy, but you do it because you know that through Jesus Christ you are worthy. But little by little, you start to see um, the fruit of your ministry. And you can lose sight of who you do this for. And that your worth um, isn't in the fruit of your labor, labor, but it is in who you serve. Now, you have to first decide it. And second, you have to become, okay? Because the scripture says um, that we will perform deeds worthy of that repentance. God didn't just um, forgive our sins just so that we can sit in church. Um, God and didn't give us a calling just to sit in a chair. Um, God wants you to become a minister. He wants you to be become uh, a kingdom-minded person where every day you practice, um, you know, every day you are in your ministry. Remember that ministry is serving others. And in order to become um, worthy of repentance, or uh, in order to practice uh, our performance within the church, right? Performing those deeds. First, the first thing I suggest is that you practice daily repentance in your prayer time. This will humble you and remind you that you need God. As you're becoming the minister that God wants for you, as you start becoming to do the things that God has called you towards, um, we have to, in our prayer time, remind us of our need for God. We need to be grounded in God's word. It's the best way to remind us that we are worthy through Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that we are his children. The Bible says that we are loved. The Bible says that we are a holy priesthood. The Bible says that we are called, right? And being grounded in his word is the best way to remind us when that little sneaky voice wants to come and tell you that you're not worthy. You can say, I am worthy because I am his child. I am worthy because Jesus died for me. I am worthy because I'm called by him. Another way to become um, is to serve using your gifting to edify God's kingdom, to edify God's house, the church. Nothing takes away the feeling of unworthiness like serving. Because when you serve, the focus, take, is focus, the focus is taken off of yourself. And it is focused on, earth, on others. Serving causes you to move from ownership to stewardship. Perspective. Remember, we are only stewarding what God has put in our hands. We are not the owners of it. Don't let your self-view be altered by the words or actions of others or the enemy. Instead, be confident in your identity in Christ as a beloved daughter and the calling he has placed over your life. God has our identity. We know our identity is found in Christ. And a lot of us allow what other people say about us to um, basically to show, right? How, or like they have our self-worth in their hands. You know, if someone says something, then our worth just goes down the drain. If someone says something, if the enemy says anything or acts a certain way, then we feel like we're no longer worthy. And the reality is you have to remember who has called you. You have to remember that it's not people that have called you. It's not people that have put you in the ministry you are in or in the place that you are within the church. If not, it is God himself that has called you. Remember, let's just kind of do a little recap. You may feel like 
you're unworthy. You may feel like there's this little voice that tells you, I can't serve God because of what I've done. But know that you are called and you are loved, not because of you, but because of Jesus and what Jesus did on the cross for you. Remember, especially us women, we have such a hard time to see our worth. A lot of us see our worth in what people say about us. Some people see our worth in what the opposite sex believes about us. Some see our worth in how we look or how we talk. But our worth isn't. It's far from that. Our worth comes from what God believes about us and what he did for us and what he wants us to do for him. Yes, we are sinful beings, but it is by the redemption of God, Jesus redeeming us and making us worthy of him. It's not by us. Just like Paul said, repent. Turn to God, performing deeds worthy of repentance. Remember, we need to repent. And then we need to act. We need to perform. We need to perform those deeds so that we can be worthy of that repentance. Remember that we have to let go, you know, of that voice that says that we're unworthy. We just need to turn to God and tell God, these are the mistakes I've made. Forgive me. And then decide. <laughs> decide that you are worthy. Know that you are worthy. That's going to give you confidence. And become that person that God values so much. Work within the kingdom. You have a place within the kingdom. God thinks of you so worthy that he already knows the area where he wants you to work, where he, he can, you can be edified. Now remember the parable of the talents. Remember when the master goes away and the man that had one hid his talents. And the one that had two doubled his talents. And the one that had five doubled his talents. And when the master came back, he said, what did you do with what I put in your hands? Because what I put in your hands has value. And one day we're going to come to Christ and we're going to go to God. And God is going to say, what did I do? What did you do with what I gave you in your hands? And some of us are going to tell God, I didn't think I was worth enough. And so I hid my talents in the ground and I did nothing either because of your pride or because you didn't want to repent or because of selfishness whatever be the reason know that one day we're going to be held accountable and don't let your the way you view your worth stop you from working within the kingdom ephesians 2 10 says for we are god's handiwork Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Remember, we are God's handiwork. We have value because God says we have value. To do the good works that he has planned way in advance for us to do. Woman of God. Right where you're at, know that you are worthy. You just have to decide that you are. God bless you. I love you. If this podcast or YouTube series has been a blessing, please rate it. That helps us very much. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Hit that, that thumbs up button because that lets us know that this content is a blessing to your life. Until next time, guys. I love you.